All right. So sixth period today, I worked out question 27, and I felt like there was a better way to do it, but I and I and I found a slightly better way to do it. But I'm going to tell you right now, 27 is a monster. There is no easy way to do question 27. Uh, it's mostly by brute force. Okay. Uh, so I'm. You can obviously see how I did question 27 on the left. A lot of work, and as I told you in class. There is no way that I'm going to be giving you a question that's this large on a test, okay? But there are eight answers to the question, and I would like you to walk walk you through it. Um, it'll look a little nicer the second time I walk through it than it did the first time I walked through it. Um, and as you can tell, you know, those are the eight answers, 0 pi, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and then pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. But well, let me walk through this with you, and hopefully this will look better. So we're actually going to um, look at this 4x, or this sine 4x right here, at, like this. Um, we're going to do it like this, 2 times 2x. So we're going to treat it as a double angle, but it's going to be twice a double angle, if that makes sense. So, you know, you and I both know that to replace sine 2x, it's 2 sine x cosine x. But, on this next one, I'm going to have 2 sine 2x cosine 2x. In other words, the x got replaced with 2x. We still have got to do substitutions for this one and this one. Well, the first one's easy, right? That's going to get replaced with 2 sine x cosine x. Of course, there's another 2 right here, and eventually, obviously, we're going to multiply those together and get 4. The question is, what are we going to replace this thing with? And that, that's, the, that's the issue here, because there's three different choices. And if, and if you look at my other version of it, when I did this other one, you can see that when I did the replacement... I replaced with cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And it created lots of ugliness in terms of the algebra. Okay? I think there's a better way to do it. Not that this is, you know, that much simpler, but it is a little bit simpler in my opinion. I'm going to go with the 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Uh, and, of course, I have this 2 sine x cosine x. Now, you've got one term here, you've got another term here. You need to think of them as two different terms. Okay. What's in common that you can pull out of both of them? I'm hoping that you see right here that there is a 2 sine x cosine x that you can pull out of both of them. In other words, we're factoring out a GCF. So 2 sine x cosine x plus, sorry, this moment has been a little tricky to You've got your 2 that's sitting right there. That did not come out. Okay. Times 2, oops. Getting ahead of myself. 2 cosine squared. Come on. Cosine squared x minus 1.
Wait a sec, did I do that right? No! Seriously? I would fix it. I forgot my plus one. Let's do a little bit of the racing here. Yeah, I know, some of you are like... He's factoring out, but he didn't use parentheses. Now, where did that plus one come from? Well, remember, when you take the two sine x, cosine x out of that one, your first term will be a 1, okay? The second term will be that miss, which would be this times this. Okay, technically we now have it in factored form. We can set the two factors equal to 0 and solve. So, if we set the, the first, the 2 sine x cosine x equal to 0, that can only happen if sine x is 0, or if cosine x is 0. I said your form is being a little bit tricky today. Or this other thing equals zero. One plus. Uh, and I guess maybe I should maybe I should distribute that. Yeah, that's um, got one plus that'd be four cosine squared x um, minus two equals zero. And you can add like terms, and add like terms and move them to the other side, so that'd be 4 cosine squared. Um, if you add a 1 and a negative 2 together, a 1 and a negative 2, that's negative 1 on this side, but then when you take that stuff to the other side, it becomes a positive 1. Now, the only reason I don't have to factor this side, now I know in the previous example, if you were with me in 6th period, I actually factored that thing. And got the 2 cosine x minus 1 and the 2 cosine x minus, uh, plus 1. And then we went about doing our division. But in, in, in reality, I don't need to factor it. I can just use... Because there's a no linear term, there's no reason I need to factor this. So the 4s cancel. And then obviously I'm going to be taking a square root of both sides. And I get cosine x... Uh, equals plus and minus one half. So now if we take a look at the circle, See, sine x being 0, sine is the y value, so if that occurred, that would occur here and here. So out of that, we get 0 and pi. Cannot call anything 2 pi because they will restrict me. My answers have to be between 0 and pi. 2 pi, what am I thinking? But there'll be a parenthesis on the other end, which will exclude 2 pi from being an answer. Uh, cosine x being 0, that's an x value being 0, that happens here and here, which is up at the top and up at the, bo or at the bottom, so that would be pi over 2, and at the bottom, 3 pi over 2. Wow, that's really circling very well today. Um, and then we have an x value over here of positive 1 half. Uh, the x value at positive one half is going to spit out an answer there and there, which would be so for the positive one half version. Um, for x equals positive one half, you would get pi over three and five pi over three. And for the negative one half version, uh, which would be on the other side, right? Something like that. 
uh, we would get, and I'm a little bit off on my drawing there, but we would get 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Eight different answers. Now, like I said, there's no way that I would make a, a question that complicated for a test. Okay? So, don't freak out on me. Think through the process of what we did. That's the important part here. Yes, I know. I stretched your brains. Okay? If you go back and look at, whoa, what happened? He lives. If you look at, at the, if you compare the two methods, one of them is a little bit easier to understand. Um, they both have similar properties, but um, one of them is definitely, the one on the right to me is easier to understand. And it came from the major problem that I had that um, was what I substituted right there and right here for the cosine 2x. Um, but, So, I know, ugliness, ugliness, ugliness. If you can understand everything that I went through in terms of substitutions and the algebra of what I was doing, you can handle anything I throw at you on a test. Okay. Uh, and uh, might as well just, whoa. Um, no, not that. Uh, while I'm here, might as well just throw 25 at you. You can see on this one, I also, on 25, I also replaced. Wait a second. Why did I do that? I have to check that one. I think I might have copied that one down wrong, or at least the first part. Okay. I'm not liking something I see here, uh, so I went back to double check, and I think. I substituted cosine 3x with something that's cosine 2x. Mm. So, what am I going to make mistakes like that? So, we have cosine of x plus 2x. Okay, next. So the first one is staying the same. I have cosine of the first, cosine of the second, minus sine of the first, sine of the second. This one's going to get substituted with 2 sine x cosine x, right? And then we have another sine x. Sometimes I just write these out. These are terms out. And then I'll show you what's in common to all of them. Now I know here in a minute we're going to have to do something with this. I know we will have to do something there. But. I notice in every single one of these terms, there, in that term, uh, in this term, uh, and in this term, I notice that every one of them has a cosine x. So if I pull that, that is not right. cosine x out, that would leave me plus cosine x. 
cosine 2x. Minus 2 sine squared, oh, sine squared x equals 0. Okay, we're getting, we're getting closer here. So the major decision is what are we going to replace with cosine 2x? And the clue, I think, is right there in my opinion. So the first term stays the same, it's cosine x. 1 plus, but in replacement of cosine 2x, I'm going to do 1 minus 2 sine squared x. That whole thing got substituted, and then of course we got another minus 2 sine squared x. Equals 0. So we can add like terms here, right? Uh, those add up to 2 minus 4 sine squared x and cosine x equals 0. And let's see here. We can set the two factors equal to 0. Cosine x equals 0. And 2 minus 4 sine squared x equals 0. If we uh, subtract the 2 to the other side, negative 4 sine squared x equals negative 2. Divide by negative 4 on both sides. Get sine squared x equals one half. Take the square root of both sides. We end up with sine x equals plus or minus. Now remember, the square root of one is still one, right? And then the square root of 2, and of course, if we rationalize that, we would see it was radical 2 over 2. Yeah, I definitely, I, I'm actually going to go show you which problem I did. I did completely do correctly, but I rewrote the wrong problem at the beginning. And nobody stopped me. Okay, so we're talking about... Sign that's the x value, x value is 0, so top and bottom, right here and right here. So I know we're going to have pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 as answers. Okay. Y value at radical 2 over 2, um, y value at radical 2 over 2 there and there, y value at negative radical 2 over 2 there and there. So four more answers. The, the positive radical 2 over 2, uh, that's going to give me pi over 4, uh, 3 pi over 4. Gee whiz. And the negative radical 3 over 2, Okay, and not negative radical 3 over 2. Gee, I can't even copy my own self down. Negative radical 2 over 2 would give me the bottom two values there, which would be 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. And thus completes the six answers to question 25. I should probably put box around this thing. Now, what question did I, oops, what question did I actually do in that blue box right there? 
fantastic question. Um, let's go zoom in on it and show you. Because I'm probably going to have to. Um, do a little erasing here. Not a lot. So, I did not do 3x. I accidentally did 2x. Which means that this wasn't one of the homework questions that I'm aware of. Okay? So just, just a little extra for you there. So that particular problem that was done in class, I did it correctly, but I wrote, but I, that first step, I, I made a, a, a goofball mistake that I should not have made. Um, so, Good homework problem if that first one was a 2x, okay? Okay, sorry for making mistakes today, but those two problems are definitely, um, needed. they were weighing heavy on my heart.